So there's this guy and he's chatting to Jesus and he's saying, Jesus, how do I get to heaven? How do I get eternal life? And Jesus says to the guy, you're an expert in the law. What does it say? And the guy says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbour as yourself. And Jesus is like, yeah. And then the guy's like, but Jesus, who's my neighbour? And on the back of that question, Jesus tells a famous story of the Good Samaritan. And he says, there's this guy and he's walking from Jerusalem to Jericho. And on this road, there's a bunch of thieves and they run up to him and they rob him and they beat him and they strip him and they leave him half dead on the road. And Jesus says there are three people that see him that day. The first is a priest. He comes up, sees the guy half beaten on the road and walks on by. The second guy, a Levite. He comes up, sees the guy on the road, walks on by. And the third guy is a Samaritan. The people Jesus is telling this story to, they don't think much as Samaritans. Yet this is the hero of Jesus' story. And the good Samaritan comes up to the man and he pours wine and oil on his wounds and he bandages him and he picks him up and he puts him on the donkey and he takes him to the inn and pays for him to stay. At the end of that story, Jesus goes to the expert in the law and he says, who do you think of those three people is the neighbour? And the expert in the law says, the good Samaritan, and Jesus says, yeah, go and do likewise. The thing that's interesting about this question is there is only one neighbour. In my head, there were three. Two of them were bad neighbours and one of them was a good neighbour. And the bit that's interesting in this story is that Jesus' question, which one was the neighbour, implies there's only one neighbour. In my head, there were three. Two of them were bad neighbours and one of them was a good neighbour. But it's weird because Jesus says there was only one neighbour. And that neighbour was a good person. That neighbour did something to help. And all of a sudden, the definition of what a neighbour is is shifted. And it's not about the people on my road or on my street or Tony who walks his dog every Saturday. It's not necessarily about my friends or my family. But for me to be a neighbour becomes about me loving the person who crosses my path and is in need of help. All of a sudden, the term neighbour becomes a term that's full of action. And it's a title you have to earn. You have to do something to gain that title. And the reason the Good Samaritan is such a special story isn't necessarily just about what the Samaritan did, but it was about the attitude that he had. It was about the worldview that he held because there was something different in his heart than what was in the priest's or the Levi's heart. And there was something in him that held a high view of people. He, he held that high view of that individual that had been beaten and lying on that ground. And there's a challenge to us, do we hold a high view of people? Do we see them as made in the image of God? The other day, I was having a rubbish day. You know when you've got a gazillion things to do, you've hardly done any of them, you've had to rush and run for buses and trains, you nearly miss them, and it comes to the end of the day, you're flustered, you're fed up, you're tired, you just want to go home. I was having that kind of a day. And I was about 10 minutes from home, and as I was walking to my bus, I walked past one of my favourite coffee shops that sell a very yummy latte. It's got a bit of caramel in the bottom, a whole bunch of foam and a bit of toffee on top and it's scrummy. And so I thought, you've had a rubbish day, I deserve a treat. Went in, bought my coffee, came out and as I'm walking to my bus, there's a lady a few steps ahead of me talking to a man and this lady's a homeless lady. And that day, I didn't want to talk to her. I didn't want to be interrupted. I just wanted to drink my coffee and go home. And so I thought, Maybe, if I drop my head and walk on, she won't notice me. So as I walk towards her, I hold my coffee and I drop my head and I take a few steps and then a really quiet voice just gently says to me, there's no need to ignore me. I couldn't believe she'd noticed. And that day I had an opportunity to become someone's neighbor and I didn't take it. And that day, I failed to have a high view of people because I didn't need to give the lady money or I didn't need to feel guilty about having a coffee in my hand. What I did need to do was look her in the eye and say hello. 
What I needed to do was acknowledge that she is someone made in the image of God and she is a child of His. And it's a real challenge for us to live out having a high view of people. And I want us to think about our global neighbours because we're connected to people all around this world and we might not know their name or their face, we might not know where their hopes and dreams are or their favourite sport is, we will probably never meet them. Martin Luther King says, you cannot leave your house in the morning without depending on over half of the world. You sit down for your breakfast and you have your Cocoa Pops full of chocolate from Brazil or you have your cup of tea with your tea leaves from China or you have your orange juice with your oranges from South Africa. The average breakfast has travelled 5,000 miles before it gets to you. Or when we get dressed each day, when we put on our clothes, my jumper, it was made in Taiwan. And our clothes are made in Bangladesh, Malaysia, Indonesia, loads of countries. We're connected to people and we have an opportunity to love them. And a few years ago, a couple of my friends went out to Bangladesh and they met a girl called Shima. And Shima was 17 and she worked in a garment factory making clothes. She'd worked there since she was 15. Today she'd be about 21 and might still be working there. Shima might work in that factory for the next 20 years of her life. And there's people like Shima all around the world that are making our clothes. And they're treated unfairly, their working conditions aren't right. Shima says the wage is not enough. They may well have to work 15 hour days, seven days a week. They get toilet breaks banned. They're not allowed to talk to one another as they work. They can't strike, there's no union to protect them. If they cause a fuss or campaign, their job just might not be waiting for them the next day. And so what I do is when I go shopping, when I buy my next pair of jeans, I try and take Shima shopping with me. She's in my mind and when I go to pay for those clothes, I ask the shop assistant, do you know how the workers were treated who made this? Because I love your clothes, but I also really care about the people behind the products. Or when I go and I buy my breakfast or my salt and my pepper or my banana or my fruit, I look for a little symbol of a man waving at us, a fair trade symbol, which means the farmers have been paid a fair wage to produce that product. And I pay the extra pence, one because I can and two because it's a way that we can love our global neighbours and become neighbours to people who are in need. And what we can learn from the Good Samaritan about both our local and our global neighbours is that he has a high view of people. We see everyone as someone made in the image of God. And secondly, he was up for being interrupted. He let God interrupt and change his plans. And it makes me ask the question, am I someone that's saying, hey God, interrupt my day? And in our daily choices and our daily going ins and going outs, are we a group of people that let God interrupt us and let us live a life of love?